I just want to say I am recording this for like the fifth time because I'm trying to get a clear, crisp podcasting voice and this is all I can do. This is the best. This is the best you're going to get. Yo. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to this first episode of the No Money More Plans podcast. A podcast about a girl learning to take risks, grow plants and eat her veggies. I'm your host Lebo and I'm glad you're here. I'm coming to you in the spirit of post Valentine's Day chocolate discount sales. In the spirit of Galentine's Day. In the spirit of self-love, y'all, with this first solo episode. And we're just going to get right into it. So I have been interested in the idea of work even before I got my first job. I wanted to understand how people find jobs. What was it like going into work every day? And of course, how it felt like to be paid at the end of the month. My parents were both teachers who taught at a school, as teachers do. So their working days were not a mystery to me. The people that intrigued me were the investment portfolio managers, the pilots and the geologists. So I got my first taste of the runs of the monies as a door guard at res in second year. Oh guys, what a mess. It was the biggest sleep fest ever. You would have to be on duty from like 9 p.m. to about 6 a.m., something like that. Mind you, I'm an early sleeper. So by 9.30, it's lights out for me. So in terms of finding a job that was catering to my strengths, this was not it. I would literally need two recovery days after being on door guard duty. Once. But onward we went and we got paid at the end of the month. Needless to say, that gig did not last long. Then in my first year of masters, I applied to become a library assistant. This job seemed pretty simple. You wear a blue unflattering golf shirt and you help people with the printer. Did I mention that I hate using technological devices? So again, not working to my strengths here. Firstly, I would just want to advise that anyone doing postgrad probably not a good idea to get a part-time job because it, it is actually time consuming if you put the time to it and you want to finish on time but anyway okay so now picture this in the interview for this uh, library assistant job the lady asked me what I would do if a student told me the document wasn't printing and I answered as any logical technologically ad- adverse person would I said I would call the IT department (laughs) I didn't offer to check whether the student had actually pressed print or to check whether there was paper in the printer and yeah unfortunately I did not get the job but I see why now that I am older and wiser my third piece job was working as a nanny or au pair depending on your level of bougie. Um, I au paired for two precious little girls. I love working with kids, so this was actually great, and the pay was good. This job, though, got me thinking, why do parents work so hard to make so much money so that they can just spend all of that money on childcare when one of them could actually stop working? This added another layer to my investigation of work. The question here was, what is the reason for work? If it's not actually, if people are just eventually living from hand to mouth, you, you know, you get your salary at the end of the month, but 
it's all gone by the second. Just to give singles or childless people out there some perspective on the cost of childcare now, um, this is just my what I've heard from friends and um, family. So in some creches or preschools in Cape Town, you pay up to 4,000 Rand for a child of the ages between three months and five years. This money excludes diapers and food and sometimes toilet paper, which you have to bring for your child. I have also heard that aftercare, so the place your child goes to after school to do their homework, can cost upwards of 2,000 Rand a month in some schools. Au pairs these days are paid between 6,000 and 12,000 Rand per month, depending on the number of kids and work hours. This is this is excluding school fees, school uniform, just childcare after school for during the week. So before I get trolled, I do understand that some families are single parent homes and sometimes even two parent homes require all the income that they can get. So I get that. I just want us to put those numbers into perspective and ask ourselves, Am I working just to live from hand to mouth? And is there another way? So with that all all said, you can imagine that when I got my first real job, I had mixed emotions. These feelings were further, you know, intensified when I found that found out that half the people who go to work don't even like their jobs, nor do they even do the work they're supposed to do in the time allocated to do it. Please note, I said half, because there are some people who are really good at their jobs and who really enjoy their jobs. So I'm sure some of you are asking themselves, so where does this all fit in? Where does this podcast fit in, fall into place? Um, some of you who are listening on YouTube are asking themselves, So what about the recipe video this girl just posted? It all seems very random. Well, I see this podcast as a continuation of my investigative question. Since I'm a scientific researcher, we're going to let that sink. Yes, we're we're acknowledging ourselves. (laughs) We can even look at it as a mini thesis on work. The objective of this next phase is to find out if changing your career path will always guarantee greater happiness, because that's what some people believe. We're also going to ask ourselves, why do creative entrepreneurs seem happier in their chosen path? And I'm talking about people, especially with the YouTube age, YouTubers, those types of people. And are they actually happier? Are creative entrepreneurs happier? How are they financially sustaining themselves? And what creative passions are some of us scared to unleash? So when it comes to the word passion and otherworldly things, (laughs) you can imagine that my wonderful husband, who is a Christian, and I am too, um, and some of our friends have had a few serious conversations with me. So to keep myself accountable on this journey, I'm reading the book Revolutionary Work by William Taylor, who is a rector of a church in London. I haven't read a book in years, so please be patient with me. We might be stuck on one page for like two weeks. The book explains the purpose of work and how we can be wise and godly workers. We see in the book that work is dignified because God of the, the God of the Bible is a worker. He, you know, he made the heavens and the earth. In each podcast episode, I will let you know how the book is going and what I've learned in that week. And we can maybe pose some of the questions and statements that the book um, poses to some, some of our podcast guests. Well, um, I think we've reached the end of this first episode. Thank you for your time, y'all. I hope you have found something that I have said in this podcast useful. 
And now for some general housekeeping. I aim to release a new episode of the podcast every week for this first season, which will compose of 10 episodes. We'll see how this goes. But we have hope. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, um, I will put my email in the description box or somewhere on my blog and you can drop me an email. Please tune in for the next episode. Our guest is amazing. You are going to love her. It won't be a solo episode like this first one. And then lastly, if you are a podcast junkie like myself, I will link a few podcast shows that I have enjoyed. These podcasts can maybe explain further where my headspace is at. Thanks for listening. See you in the next one. Dark skin, light skin, medium tone.